and thanks for watching Gaming Out of Suitcases. I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family, and this week I'll be bringing you a holiday favorite. Well, if you're an Adams, Face Eater. That's right, Face Eater. Don't be fooled, though, it's really an apocalyptic version of Gin Rummy, also known as Phase 10. Uh, I found it in Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon, when we were there on tour, and since it was developed by a Portland, Oregon game designer, I thought I would support local gaming and go ahead and pick it up, and I'm very glad I did. Uh, we spent a lot of time playing this game on the road. Here's a little overview. Again, when you think about Face Eater, think about Gin Rummy meets Dawn of the Dead. It's, uh, the object of the game is to get rid of all your cards while keeping the lowest points you possibly can in your hand. In each round, the first player will call the goal for that round. A set of three, a run of four, etc. Each turn, players will draw two cards from the draw pile and then try to set down the goal. If you're the first person to set down, then you get negative 200 points. If you can't, then you're going to discard a normal card to the discard pile. Once you've set down, though, you can continue to play cards from your hand on your cards or another player's cards who've set down. Like adding another king to your set of three kings. Once all of the normal cards are played and discarded out of your hand, then the round ends and you get another negative 200 points. Normal cards being the number cards and the face cards. Ace, king, queen, jack. That's the gin rummy part. The fun part about this game are the use of power cards. Now these are cards that can be played any time throughout the game, not just your turn, and they do special things. Mostly screwing with the other players. This makes Face Eater a very fast-paced game. Prepare to be lobotomized or nerve-gassed at any time. The balance of power in this game shifts very quickly. The person with the lowest amount of points will become the target for all the other players. So alliances are going to be made and broken all throughout the game. You'll find yourself helping out your neighbor in the next turn, screwing them over. Generally, the game is played in three rounds and you add up the points at the end of every round and then finally at the end of the game to see who wins ultimately. But you can play as many or as few rounds as you like. There are even a couple cards out there that end the game, not the round, the game at any time. So if you're in a good standing point and uh, want to call it night early, Go ahead and throw that out there. The only drawback to this game is that the power cards tend to be a bit confusing, especially when you're first learning the game. Uh, the wording on them is fairly vague, uh, and they keep referring you to the instruction booklet. So your first five, ten games, you're going to be spending a lot of time doing what should be fast-paced moves, but stopping the game to look stuff up in the rule book, and then arguing with your friends about what exactly that card is supposed to do from the little more descriptive but still kind of vague descriptions in the rule book. Uh, but once you get past that, once you've kind of decided while well, the cards really do, um, the game really really moves fast and it's a lot of fun. Some of the cards are brilliant and the artwork is really phenomenal. Like Mutation. This card changes a card that is almost part of a set into a set. Like if you have a set of threes, but you have two threes and a four, you can mutate that four right into a three. Feeding Frenzy basically declares war on one player and forces everybody to play any negative cards on that player for the entire round. Nerve Gas effectively skips a player's turn for the amount of turns that there are people playing. So if you've got five people playing, that person is out for five whole turns. They can't defend themselves, but you can attack. Them. The Pug of Doom, Behold the Face of Evil, gives your opponent 500 points, positive points, and makes them skip every other turn. While the Cosmic Chicken gives you negative 500 points and allows you to draw three cards instead of two at the beginning of every turn. And then there's my favorite, the Soul Snatcher. This card allows you to trade scores with any player at any time. So you can wait until all the scores have been uh, added up at the end and then trade with them right there and be the winner. It's a great backstabbing game and it's a lot of fun even if you're losing because you're usually laughing at the situations as they evolve. I mean, what other game allows you to alien probe your friends or destroy the entire earth if things aren't going your way. I highly recommend it. And since it's only the size of two decks, it's really easy to travel around. So you can take it with you on your next trip or your next tour. Hopefully I've wet your whistle with this overview of Face Eater, at least enough to come back on Wednesday and see a playthrough of one full round. Should be fun. Also, our show is going on hiatus for the holidays, and so is my vlog. So be sure to tune in on Sunday for a little holiday message from the Adams Clan. Uh, but then we won't be back until the the beginning of next year. If you like what you saw here today, please comment, like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Keep gaming!